Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we are going to look at some stove components from the company Work Tough Stove. And before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Work Tough Stove who have provided these products for review. Now if you're not familiar with Work Tough Stove, do me a favor, go back and take a look at one of my prior videos for the details. But the Work Tough Stove is a product that I've been using for quite a while now. And in fact, if you look at my particular stove, you will see that at this point, it actually has some fairly substantial use on it. This has been used like crazy and it probably needs a pretty good cleanup at this point but the real purpose for today's video is to take a look at these components when using them as a hot tent application and when i say hot tent what i have here is the lux tent octopeak which this particular video is not a review on this tent, but rather it's my first time setting this up. It's my opportunity in a controlled environment to get this hot tent set up going. So in other words, taking the work tough stove, installing it into this tent, using the new components to their best advantage to help protect my tent and really test it now to make sure it's gonna be a good viable option for my cold weather camping excursions. But with that said, I have a number of products here and a whole bunch of work to do. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. So if you've been following my channel, you probably realize that one of the things I do as a matter of practice is testing my gear and especially my shelters in a controlled environment before I go out into the wilderness. To me, that's a big deal. And so in this particular case, you'll see I have taken my work tough stove and installed it inside this Lux Octo Peak tent. Now this tent to me is brand new. I've never used it and I've never used some of the components on this stove. Like for example, a couple new pieces that are going to help protect my tent. So the tent protector here you'll see I have installed on the inside. Now the interesting thing to me and the reason why I put this on the inside is because I didn't want to take my actual tent's stove pipe adapter and cut it to the point where it was overly sized. If you look at the size of this tent protector, it is kind of large in overall diameter. So the way I opted to do it was to keep the stovepipe itself running through the tent and keeping the protector on the inside. And that's going to give me a benefit where I actually can protect myself and not get burned. You'll notice one of the important things for me was to have access to my handle at all times. But another new component added to the outside of the stove here, you'll see a brand new section of pipe as well as a spark arrestor. And as I had originally mentioned, making sure I didn't cut my stove pipe adapter too large. Now here's the original piece that came off of the top of the stove pipe. Here you'll see it is pretty much just a storm cap. So now moving from the storm cap to the actual spark arrestor, that's a big upgrade. But other components you can get, like for example, 45 degree angles and bends. This here is a very nice piece. You can see everything coming out of the box brand new is very shiny and nice. But to me, I was kind of curious what it would be like to have a fire inside this tent. But I figured the only way to get down to business is to test this inside the tent and use it as if I was gonna use it on an overnight adventure. So loading this up and getting my fire started, here you'll see getting a nice fire started, good and warm, and coming up to temperature fairly quick. Now one of the things that I did not anticipate was the amount of smoke that actually rolled out the front of the stove. That's something that you do need to pay attention to. Not a huge deal if you're careful. It just means a matter of keeping your doors open while you get your fire started, making sure you have proper ventilation and no real smoke buildup inside your shelter system. But here you can see as I back away, there is a considerable amount of smoke. Again, as I mentioned, not a big deal, just something that you need to pay attention to. 
Now taking a look at the Sparka restaurant top here, you'll see dark smoke coming out of the top. Well, after a while, not a big deal. Once the stove comes up to temperature, gets nice and hot, does a good job burning all of the excess out of the stove pipe itself, coming up to temperature. And here you can see just nice heat coming out of the top of the pipe and out of that spark arrester. Over time, the brand new sections of pipe will tarnish. Here you can see the difference between a new section and some of my original sections of pipe. This stuff definitely does take a beating after a while, but because it is a good quality material, it is made to last. Here you can see the stove inside and temperature definitely starting to rise. So after the fire running for a little while, it puts me in a real good shape to really try to make a comparison between the heat outside and the heat inside of the tent. So as we look closely here outside, you'll see it was approximately 52 to 54 degrees, fairly cool. But inside, closer to 72 to 74 degrees. Here it may be even pushing closer to 75. So the Worktop stove doing a wonderful job inside the tent. And even with a good amount of space on the bottom, that's the one thing I did not do was button this up extremely tight. But as this comes up to temperature, doing a very nice job. And you can even see the tent is nice nicely protected. Now I did maintain the vents on both sides in the fully open position. That was very important to me to make sure that I had proper airflow and especially while I'm testing the tent I wanted to make sure everything was in good shape. Now one of the things that I wasn't too sure is if there would be potentially any carbon monoxide buildup. I didn't expect to have any problems but I also didn't want to chance it. And the next day after running the stove for a long period of time I wanted to make sure that I checked the entire tent, looked for any potential sources of burn holes or staining or just evidence that anything might have come out of that spark arrester. Absolutely no problem at all. The Worktop stove performed well. It worked well inside this Octopeak. I had absolutely no problem, no damage, and everything working perfectly. So the test was definitely successful. For me getting out here and putting this to good use ahead of time, seeing how the setup would go, getting used to it, and gaining some confidence in my equipment is a big deal. The last thing I wanna do is get out into the mountains and find out I have a problem. So getting out in the backyard and the controlled environment gives me the confidence now to move forward with my winter excursions. So, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the WorkTough stove and the new WorkTough stove components. Again, me utilizing the WorkTough stove 380 model. You can see that all of these components are compatible with both models, but really specifically one thing to pay attention to. When you get into the different stove pipes, you'll notice that they are different lengths. So for example, the 380 stove pipe can fit inside the stove for storage, while the 500 stove length cannot. So you just need to kind of pay attention to the details. But other than that, all the other components are compatible, which is great. So whether or not you're adding 45 degree bends or you're adding the spark arrester, that is wonderful. And the stove coming really factory with a cap, now having this arrester, it's a good idea, especially when you're going to be using this above a tent and something that's a nylon material that could potentially burn or melt. So having the spark arrester, definitely key. And the other thing, again, just worth noting, this is a little bit sizey, a little bit bulky. Adding some of these components now, like your safety screen and now the spark arrester, it's going to add a little bit of bulk and volume to your setup. But in my case where I'm intending on using a pulk sled, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm gonna bundle everything up nicely. I'm gonna keep it safe and protected. And I know that when I have myself a good quality wood burning stove in my hot tent, it's gonna be a more enjoyable trip. And so again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people that work Tough Stove for providing these products for review. I do greatly appreciate it. It allows me to get out there. It allows me to experiment and to really try new things. So it's a big deal and I do greatly appreciate it. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.